Hi, I'm Peter Leopold, a curator here at the National Museum of American History, and I'd like to show you some of the artifacts from our collection that will give you a little bit of insight into the Dust Bowl era. Dust Bowl farmers uh, um, really lived in a, in a difficult time in the, in the 30s. They refer to it as the Dirty 30s. And um, for agriculture, it was a very difficult time, even before the weather turned bad, that um, the agriculture had really boomed during World War I. The prices were up. Uh, people expanded uh, considerably, bought equipment, bought land. And then with the 20s, um, after World War I, the commodity prices for things like flour and, and corn uh, really dropped tremendously. The, the demand went down. Um, and as the, as the demand went down, uh, the weather turned bad. And so there was a real alignment of, of serious problems. And to compound it even more, there was a lot of technological change that was going on in agriculture. And all these things collided uh, to, to create a, uh, an extraordinarily difficult time for, for farmers in, in uh, one part of the nation. Uh, and the Dust Bowl was certainly a catastrophe of, um, of major ecological um, means, but it was um, also a, a real problem in terms of, of finance, even of, of land use. One of the first things to understand about agriculture in the, in the 30s was that, um, that, that there was fundamental change going on. Mechanized plows that could be pulled by by horses uh, um, came along and by the mid uh, 19th century a lot of equipment was being invented. Here we have a, a mower. This is uh, invented, uh, this is a patent model invented by a fellow named uh, Eichmeier and um, it, it was an innovation. All patent models really are small innovations in, in mowing, probably a um, change in the, in the type of cutter teeth. But um, mowers like this meant that farmers could be more productive. And by the 20s, people were using horse-drawn sulkies. A sulky is a plow that you get to ride on top of. Um, you can see there's a little seat here. The horse would be um, um, uh, harnessed up in the front. And as the um, farmer went through the field, the, the um, soil would be turned over. Um, the fields would be, they would be in the fields a lot, not only plowing initially, but, but as, uh, as the crop was growing, they would have to cultivate in order to keep the weeds down. So instead of using the, the hoe for cultivation, uh, you could use cultivators, machinery, to, to keep the weeds down. But all of this meant turning the soil over and over, exposing um, the soil to the environment. So the tractor that we all um, think is, is, is fundamental to, to agriculture really started to burst on the scene in, in, the, in the teens. Um, earlier there had been some big steam powered tractors. This is actually a, a toy tractor, um, probably um, was, was made in the 20s or 30s. It's typical of the, of the period. And these were lightweight um, little tractors, um, uh, 5 to 10 horsepower. Um, and uh, capable of, of doing lightweight work and um, relatively inexpensive so that, that farmers could afford them. So here we have a piece of, of trade literature um, from the Angel Plow. Trade literature is a wonderful um, historic document for, for us to look at to understand the thinking behind uh, uh, farming at the time period. These are the ad advertisements that are produced um, trade literature is still produced um, today for things that you might want to buy. This piece was produced in the 20s, and um, reading from it is, is really fascinating. Here's the angel plow <coughs> being pulled by a tractor, very similar to the toy tractor that I have here, um, multi-bottom plow. So instead of a single chair, it's actually got many different discs here being pulled through. And in the advertisement, it says, increase your yield. By an entirely new principle of design, Mr. Angel has built a disc plow that thoroughly pulverizes and turns the soil for a depth of three to six inches, killing all we weeds and volunteer weeds, but still leaving enough of the stubble on the top of the ground to serve as a mulch to hold the moisture and prevent the soil from blowing. So you can see in the, in the 20s, 
that farmers were thinking about some of the problems. They knew that, that the wind could blow the soil um, and they were looking for technological fixes. Um, but the thought of, of, of not farming the land um, certainly wasn't, uh, wasn't likely because farmers are optimistic. They're going to, they assume the rains will come and, and they'll be able to, um, to grow bumper crops. But the switch to mechanized equipment, tractors, sulky plows, uh, moving away from the sickle to um, a, a mower, all of this meant that farming becomes capital intensive, that, um, that, that agriculture is, is about spending more money. Um, you spend more money, you have more equipment, you produce more goods. Um, and it all works out well as long as it works out well. Um, if, uh, if the weather is, is good, if pests stay away and you have a good crop, everything is fine and you can maintain the loans that you've taken out to buy the equipment. But as you, as you um, become more capital intensive and, and um, almost everybody had debt to support the, um, the equipment, it means that you're much more at risk. And um, if something goes bad, if the market falls apart, if, the, if a drought um, comes along, then uh, the results um, will be disastrous uh, much faster because uh, you have to pay the bank and uh, the pressure to produce more is, is great. So there's a bit of a cycle um, that as you start to use more equipment that it, um, that it becomes a um, an urge to plant more um, and turn up more land. And in agriculture, how much land you should actually plant is always a, a, a big issue. In the United States, um, from its inception up until probably about 1920, the, the axiom always had been extensive rather than intensive. And by this means that, that the United States is blessed by a lot of arable land and um, uh, rich areas that, that we can grow a lot of crops. And farmers didn't have to be terribly productive because they could just um, um, extend into new areas and plant more and more areas. The number of, of acres under till was at its height in the mid-20s. Um, today, farming has become intensive. So there's been a, a change. The number of of acres that are being cultivated in the United States today is actually less than it was in the 1920s, yet production is considerably higher. So uh, farming is, is um, much more intensive. It means that, that farmers are squeezing much more out of the same uh, pieces of, of ground that they had before. Things don't always work out as, as expected, that sometimes there are uh, consequences um, that, that are, you would never think would occur. In, in the Dust Bowl, there was a lot of unintended consequence of agricultural practice. That, that farmers um, did things that, that they thought would make them more productive, but in fact um, were horrific to the land. Um, they didn't do it because they were mean people, they did it because they didn't think about it. And uh, um, these kinds of surprises are, are, are things that are humbling for us all and, and always good to um, think about as uh, we look at new inventions and new solutions.